I'm Dave Ford and this is the second screencast in a series looking at creating a matching pairs exercise that's going to look a little bit like this. So I'm just going to get rid of this which is the final product and <clears throat> we're going to go through the steps required. Now what I've done here is I've created my table ready to put the information in. That I'm assuming that most people can do so I'm not going to show you how to do that I'm hoping that's okay. And then if I just scroll down slightly what I've done is I've created another table where I've listed some countries and some capitals which correspond. And what we need to do is we need to rearrange this so it will then feed into the table above. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select my uh, country and capital and I'm going to sort them alphabetically. So it's now put England at the top and Wales at the bottom and the capitals are still lining up. Now it's important that the capitals line up with the countries so that we can use this for checking later on. What I'm now going to do is create the order in which the answers are going to appear in the table above. So to do that I'm going to select my capitals and I'm going to copy, so control C, and then I'm going to paste them over here. What I'm now going to do is add a couple of extra dummy answers. Oops, spelt that wrong. So I'm going to add in Oslo. In fact, I'm going to spell Cardiff correctly. I'm going to add Vienna. And I'll add Lisbon. So I've added in a few extra answers. And I'm now going to sort this list alphabetically. Now it's recognised that I could expand the selection but I don't want to, I want to only sort this little part of the list. So I click on sort and now I've got these capitals in alphabetical order. So I'm going to come back up to here and there's two ways I could do this. I could just click on the cell and go equals to, which is probably the easiest way of doing it, and that means that's equal to England. And if I then copy the formula down it will suck all of the countries from the table below into this table above. Now for the capital, uh, this is what the student's going to enter, but we can enter some validation. So on the data toolbar, we've got the option of data validation. So I click on that and choose data validation. Now under the settings, I'm going to choose a list. And it's going to ask me where is the source of this list. So I click on this little symbol here. And then again I'm going to scroll down. And my list is going to be the items that I want to appear. So I select all of those capitals in that list. And press enter. And click on OK. What it's going to do now is it's going to give me those options there. And when I add one it will add it to my box. Having done the first and got it correct. I'm then going to pull it down choose data validation and it will recognize that I want to pull the formatting down so I click on yes. Now I could have just selected the whole region and then done the data validation in one go or you can do one cell once. It depends on how big an area you're working. If I'm working on a big area I'll generally do one cell first, check I've got it right and then I'll copy it down afterwards just because it's slightly easier. What I'm then going to do is format my cells so that the students know that they need to enter some information so I'm going to choose a cream colour and same again for where you enter your name. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to make these cells so that they're unprotected. So I right click and then go to the protection tab and I make sure that that is not ticked. And the same again for that one. Okay, so I'm making sure that that is not ticked. What we're then going to do is, in the next screencast, I'll show you how to check the student answers.